Hello and welcome to another session of daily prelims practice. Here we will take up MCQs based on important news and articles from the Hindu and Indian Express newspaper. Topics for today's discussion are displayed on your screen. Let's begin the discussion. So the first question of today's discussion is based on this news which featured on page number 9 of the Hindu newspaper. This article is based on new studies by researchers from Canada, Netherlands and US and it has reported that coastal life forms have colonized plastic items in the ocean. That means the garbage in shape of plastic in the ocean has become a new habitat for various organisms. This article talked about North Pacific Subtropical Gyre that is NPSG which consists of the various ocean currents namely Kuroshio, North Pacific, California Current and North Equatorial Current. Now UPSC has been asking questions from Oceanography and the Geography section and to be specific it has been asking questions related to ocean currents. As in 2015 it has asked question related to reason behind eastward flow of the equatorial counter current. So let's take up today's practice MCQ. Question says which of the following ocean currents can be categorized as warm ocean currents based on temperature. You have to select the correct answer from the following quotes. Option 1 is Kuroshio, second is Labrador, third is Gulf Stream and fourth is Benjuela Current. Now ocean currents are the continuous, predictable, directional movement of seawater driven by gravity, wind that causes Coriolis force and water density. Now ocean current can be classified as cold currents and warm currents. Now in crude terms, cold current brings cold water into the warmer water area. In other terms, you may say that these currents bring colder water from the higher latitude to the warmer water in the lower latitude, while the vice versa is true for the warm currents. Now here in this picture, the red color signifies the warm current and blue color signifies the cold currents. Now Kuroshio is a north flowing warm current off the coast of Japan in the Pacific Ocean. While Labrador current is a cold current in the North Atlantic Ocean that flows from the Arctic Ocean south through Labrador coast across Newfoundland and then south along Canada's east coast. Now Gulf Stream is a strong ocean current that brings warm water from the Gulf of Mexico into the Atlantic Ocean. Whereas Benjuela current is a cold wide current that flows northward along the west coast of South Africa. So now you know that in the given options Kuroshio is a warm current and Gulf Stream is a warm current. So our answer would be A that is 1 and 3 only. Answer for this PYQ is B that is convergence of the two equatorial currents. The next question of today's discussion is based on this news which featured on page number 12 of the Hindu newspaper. Now India is going to host an international summit on Buddhism in New Delhi from April 20 to 21. Delegates from 30 countries will participate and a notable exception being China. Apart from China, Tibetan spiritual leader the Dalai Lama is also unlikely to attend the two-day conclave. Now Buddhism and Jainism and features related to it has been a persistent theme in UPSC prelims examination. As in 2013, it has asked a question based on features of Chatyas and Viharas which are closely associated with Buddhism. So let's take up today's practice MCQ. Question says, with reference to the religious history of India, consider the following statements you have to identify the incorrect statements. Statement 1 says, at the end of the third Buddhist council, Mogali Puttisa composed a book, that is the Kathavattu. Now this statement is correct. As according to the Pali and Chinese account, the chairman of third Buddhist council, which happened in 250 BC, was Mogali Puttisa. And in order to ensure that Dhamma was kept pure, he compiled a book during the council called Kathavattu. The Kathavattu is the fifth of the seven books of the Abhidhamma Pitaka. Now second statement says, Sutta Pitaka and Vinay Pitaka were compiled at the second Buddhist council. Now this statement is incorrect. As the first Buddhist council which happened in 483 BC, 
resulted in the compilation of Vinaypitaka, which mainly contains the rules of the Buddhist order, which was recited by Upali, and Suttpitaka, which was recited by Ananda, which contains the great collection of Buddha's sermons on matters of doctrine and ethical beliefs. So both the books were compiled in the first council and not the second council. Now last statement says, in the fourth Buddhist council, the Buddhist order split into Sthaviravadinis and Mahasanghikas. Now this statement is again incorrect. Buddhist order split into these two factions in the second Buddhist council, which happened in the year 383 BC. The fourth Buddhist council, which happened in 98 AD, resulted in final division of Buddhism into Mahayana and Hinayana sect. So as you had to find the incorrect statements, our answer would be A, that is 2 and 3 only. Answer for this PYQ is B, that is Chaitya is a place of worship while Vihara is the dwelling place of the monks. Now for our next question, we have taken up theme of space exploration. As UPSC has been asking question based on various space exploration and their objective. As in 2014, it has asked a question based on various spacecraft and their purpose. So we have curated a question based on Artemis mission which featured in today's newspaper. Question says, consider the following statements with reference to the Artemis mission. You have to identify the correct statements. Statement 1 says, Artemis is a series of missions for moon exploration led by European Space Agency. Now this statement is incorrect. As Artemis is indeed a series of missions for the moon exploration but it is led by NASA that is National Aeronautics and Space Administration of USA along with three partner agencies that is the ESA, European Space Agency, Japanese Aerospace Agency that is JAXA and Canadian Space Agency that is CSA. So this project is being led by NASA and not the ESA. However, ESA is a partner in this project. Now statement 2 says Artemis 3 mission aims to land two astronauts on the north pole of the moon. Now this statement is again incorrect. As Artemis 3 is crewed mission which aims at landing humans on the moon and it is expected to be launched by 2025. It would be the first human landing on the moon by NASA since its Apollo mission in 1972. It will land first women and first person of color on the moon. The landing system will then take two astronauts down to the moon's south pole, a region previously unvisited by the humans. So as you had to find the correct statements, our answer would be D, that is neither one nor two. Answer for this PYQ is A, that is one only. Now why we have taken up this question because of this news which featured on page number 13 of the Hindu newspaper. Now SpaceX has postponed the first test flight of the Starship rocket. Due to technical issues, NASA has picked up Starship spacecraft for the Artemis 3 mission. This starship consists of a 50 meter tall spacecraft designed to carry crew and cargo which is atop a 230 feet tall first stage super heavy booster rocket. It is the most powerful rocket ever built which is designed to send astronauts to the moon and Mars and beyond. The next question of today's discussion is inspired from this news which featured on page number 12 of the Hindu newspaper. Now in the first ever census carried out in Kendrapara and Jagat Singhpur, 179 of the nearly threatened birds were counted. Information on their distribution, habitat and breeding was also collected and scientists have concluded that the bird which is called as pitas have found a new heaven in Odisha districts. Now the important information which is related to this bird that its IUCN status is nearly threatened. Now important species which are in news are regular feature of UPSC prelims examination. As in 2020, it has asked you to identify the group of the mentioned species. So let's take up today's practice MCQ. Question is, which of the following bird species has been categorized as critically endangered in India? Your options are Bengal Florican, Jordan Cursor, Sociable Lapwing and White Bellied Heron. You have to select the correct answer from the quotes given below. 
So in order to answer this question, let us quickly look into the list of bird species which have been designated as critically endangered as per the IUCN Red Book data list. First is forest owlet. Second is Jardin's cursor. Third is Bengal florican, while fourth is white-bellied heron. Another important name is Great Indian Bustard, Indian Vulture, Red-Headed Vulture, White-Rumped Vulture and Slender-Billed Vulture. While Himalayan Quail and Pink-Headed Duck are extinct from India. So based on this information, now you can identify that all of the four mentioned bird species are critically endangered as per the IUCN Red Book list. Answer for this PYQ is A, that is all these names belong to birds. The next question of today's discussion is based on this news which featured on page number 9 of the Indian Express newspaper. Now India on Monday took a stock of the ongoing modification process of the Indus Water Treaty, a pact that was inked 62 years ago between the two neighboring nations that is India and Pakistan for the management of cross-border rivers. Now various details and features related to Indus River Basin has already been covered in previous DPP sessions. So today we have curated a question which is based on wetlands of international importance in the Jammu Kashmir region. And specifically those wetlands which have been identified under the Ramsar Convention. As UPSC has been previously asking question based on important lakes and wetland sites across India. As in 2018, UPSC has asked you to identify which among the following is an artificial lake. So on a similar line, we have curated a question in which you have to identify which one of the following is a natural lake. Your options are Haigam wetland in Jammu and Kashmir, Sirpur wetland in Madhya Pradesh, Karikili bird sanctuary Tamil Nadu and Hirakond reservoir Odisha. Now as you know, India is having the largest network of Ramsar sites in India. India has so far declared 75 wetlands as a Ramsar sites covering 23 states and UTs. Now, Haigam Wetland Conservation Reserve is a natural wetland in Jammu and Kashmir. It falls within the river Jhelum Basin and is recognized as an important bird area. Sirpur Wetland is a man-made wetland in the state of Madhya Pradesh, while Kari Killi Bird Sanctuary is a man-made wetland in the state of Tamil Nadu. Similarly, Hirakund Reservoir is also a man-made reservoir and it is largest earthen dam built across Mahanadi River in the state of Odisha. As we discussed earlier that this question is based on latest entry into the Ramsar Convention. So there are five wetlands of international importance in the in Jammu and Kashmir which are identified under the Ramsar Convention. These include Shalabak, Haigam, Surinsar, Mansar, Hokersar and Wooler Lake. The sixth one that is Somuriri is in Ladakh. Out of the five wetlands, Shalabak and high gum were inducted recently that is in 2022 as Ramsar sites. So answer for this practice question is A that is high gum is a natural lake. While answer for this PYQ is A that is Kodai Kanal. So the last question of today's session is based on this news which featured on page number 16 of the Indian Express newspaper. Now the Supreme Court disagreed with the contention of the NGO that is Association for Democratic Reforms that election commissioner Arun Goyal will be a yes man for the government just because the government has selected him. The bench presided by Justice K.M. Joseph subsequently adjourned the hearing after Justice Joseph himself rescued from hearing it. Now question based on important constitutional bodies such as election commission have been a persistent theme for UPSC prelims examination. As in 2017, it has asked question based on features related to the election commission of India. So we have curated a practice question which is based on mandates of various constitutional bodies. So question says with reference to the constitutional bodies consider the following statements. You have to identify the incorrect statements. Now statement 1 says the constitution of India provides for the strength and detailed qualification for the members of Union Public Service Commission that is UPSC. Now this statement is incorrect as the UPSC which is consist of a chairman and other members 
appointed by the president of india the constitution without specifying the strength has left the matter to the discretion of the president who determines its composition and as you all know president discretion is nothing but the advice of council of minister usually the commission consists of 9 to 11 members including the chairman further no qualification are prescribed for the commission's membership except that one half of the member of the commission should be such person who have held office for at least 10 years either under government of india or under government of any state the next statement is the chairman and member of the state public service commission can be removed only by the president now this statement is correct although the chairman and member of a state public service commission are appointed by the governor they can be removed only by the president and not by the governor the president can remove them on the same grounds and in the same manner as he can remove a chairman or member of the upsc now third statement says the constitution determines the qualification of members of finance commission now this statement is also incorrect as the constitution authorizes the parliament to determine the qualifications of the members of the finance commission and the manner in which they should be selected accordingly parliament has specified the qualification of the chairman and members of the commission the chairman should be a person having experience in public affair and four others member will include a judge of high court or a person who is qualified to be appointed as a judge of high court a person who has specialized knowledge of finance and accounts of the government third a person who has wide experience in financial matters and fourth a person who has a special knowledge of economics so it is the parliament which determines the qualification of the members of finance commission and not the constitution so as you had to find the incorrect statements our answer would be c that is 1 and 3 only answer for this pyq is d that is 3 only